Australia, something her niece Totty says the country needs. Yesterday would have been the Greece star's 74th birthday. To mark the occasion, Olivia's daughter Chloe spoke publicly for the first time since losing her mum seven weeks ago, supported by her cousin Totty. Mom's dream was, you know, for for kinder treatments for cancer and end to cancer, really. Yeah. So um, I feel the torch has been passed and this is my mission and my passion and I'm so grateful to be doing it with my beautiful cousin yeah. for my mother. Well, let's speak to a beautiful cousin, Totty, joins us now from Melbourne, a niece of Olivia Newton-John. Thank you very much indeed for joining us in what is a very significant week, of course, because yesterday would have been your aunt's birthday and how, I mean, that is the first of her birthdays without her. How would you normally have marked it? Well, normally um, she's out here because we're getting ready for the wellness walk and we normally have a, you know, a family gathering and have a cake and drink vodkas and martinis and have a whole lot of fun. We've got a very robust family, so it's always kind of loud and fun. And I'm, I, I actually posted a, a video of it on my Instagram of the last birthday that we had at my place and it was so happy and beautiful, so... You and Beautiful the family, having those memories. You and the family must have been so moved, overwhelmed by the outpouring of, um, of love for, for Olivia, for your aunt um, in recent weeks following her, her sad her death. I mean, how much has that meant to you and the family? Um, it, it was, I mean, we knew how much people loved her and she was such a lovable person, but the how big it got was really extraordinary for all of us. And the whole of Melbourne was lit up in pink lights and the Sydney Harbour Bridge and, and the Opera House. And it, we were blown away with how broad it went on a global level. It was um, really heartwarming, surprising but not because we knew she was loved, but it was so big and it was really beautiful because I think when we're grieving and and people are grieving with you, it kind of helps. And I really understood her fans grieving. I, I remember when um, Princess Diana died. I was it was like I had lost someone. So I really understood how her fans felt because she was a part of everyone's lives for so long, and so beautiful. You know, Australia particularly proud, of course, of Olivia Newton John, and there is going to be this state memorial for her. Do you know what that will be like, how people will be able to pay their own tributes to her? I'm not allowed to really talk about it at the moment. I so wish I could and please forgive me, but nothing's really totally set in stone so I don't want to be saying anything that I shouldn't be saying. But um, I've just come back from America actually where all family flew in from everywhere and all of her really close friends, and we had a beautiful celebration um, in California, and I've, I just got back day before yesterday, and that was a really, really, really healing for what us. Is... It, it's very strange when people, you know, families suddenly die. It's very difficult, and, and funerals or memorials are a very important part of, you know, acceptance and being together as a family was really important. And you've got the Walk for Wellness coming up uh, in a week or so's time, all for... Olivia's very important um, charities that she supported after her illness. Can you tell us about the Walk for Wellness and also how people watching our programme can, can join in? Is there a way that they can be part of it? Yes, absolutely. It's being held in Melbourne and Olivia would come here every year. But quite a few years ago, before the whole COVID thing, we started doing virtual walks so we could get people walking all over the world. And this year it feels more important to support to support her legacy and her dream and there's a website and it's walk for wellness as in walk for wellness.com.au and you can register for free to um, be a virtual walker and what you'll get is a, a fundraising page and then you can share that with your family and friends and help support her dream and what the wellness um, center really does is help people you know with a cancer diagnosis and their cancer journey but we offer things like oncology massage and acupuncture and art therapy and music therapy and all the things that Olivia went and sourced 
up by herself and they've been proven to really help with pain and nausea and anxiety and all the things that go along with um with a cancer diagnosis and Olivia had to go and find all that stuff herself while she was going through treatment so this why it was so important for her to set up this center and for us to keep it alive and as you saw in that clip earlier Chloe's jumped on board I've been doing this with Olivia for about 13 or 14 years from before the hospital was even a hole in the ground and I'm so happy not just for myself that Chloe's jumping in and for the hospital but really happy for Chloe as well because having a really strong sense of purpose when you're going through grief is a really powerful thing to help you and just to be able to you know Chloe and I holding hands and having each other's back helping keep Olivia's legacy alive is just such an important thing and you know we're both very very passionate about it mm. and as I said earlier I've been doing this for a long time and till the day I die I will be keeping her legacy alive and she wanted to see an end to cancer in her lifetime and that didn't happen and hopefully it'll happen in my lifetime. Absolutely what a mission. Totti thank you very much indeed for joining us this morning lovely to talk to you even though obviously sad circumstances but all the very best. And her legacy will live on. Thank, Thank you. you. So Here's much Laura for with the weather.